Welcome back. All right. I believe this is like a part two. Um, notice anything different? Um, I was going to use uh, felt tip, erase an erasable felt tip marker, but. I went ahead and bought the official battle board laminated reusable stickers because it goes with this map. It's made by the same company and it goes over just about everything you need and not only a hero quest adventure but an advanced hero quest. See here's the man traps that took out uh, the Witcher's uh, leg in my test adventure there. I mean, this is this is awesome. Like, I'm not even, you know, they're not even sponsoring this, and I'm uh, I'm amazed. I mean, see, this is straight for Hero Quest, the weapons rack, and the torture ch uh, chamber. This is what I like a lot. All this gold, that's awesome. This is fantastic. Tables, a uh, journal table, a writing table, a little uh, seat, um, throne, um, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff you can use for Hero Quest and definitely any D&D stuff or adventure um, that you're doing. It's awesome. Only about, about 11 bucks on Amazon. I love these walls. It's, these come in so handy for what I'm doing. Um, check out the stairs. Bam! So, through the uh, post-it note stairs out. <laughs> and got some good uh, sticker stairs. And these little walls here, they're reusable. They, they're like laminated stickers or... Look at that. So it covers up any of that in there. So I'm impressed. That's a lot of fun now. Now we're we're doing some advanced hero questing. Okay. So I got my fighter in the lead. And uh like I said in the last video, we are here. He's looking over, he's checking to see if there's any traps. I announce it. I don't know if there's, I forgot if there's anything about announcing that I'm checking for traps before I turn the corner here. But let's see. As always, go to this. Roll 1d12. See how many sections we get. Eight, okay. Two sections. Can I roll, because I rolled an eight. So, let's see what the first one is. Let's see here. So I'm going to look this way to the left. And and of course you add the two together. 7 and 3. 8, 9, 10. Ah! A whole lot of more nothing. <laughs> so... It's safe to say they're turning the corner a lot of nothing here. And, uh, okay. But there's another section. Let's see here. Uh, it's an exploration of dungeons. Standing on stair. Every time they end their move, looking into yet a, a yet unexplored area of a dungeon. Roll D12 for the number of floor sections. Um... Uh, for the number of floor sections ended by a T-junction. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I'm, I'm screwing this up. The heroes start the exploration of the dungeon standing on the stair every time they end their move looking into yet unexplored area of the dungeon. Rolled 1d12 for the number, which I did. The floor sections that will show up 
Uh, then roll D12 to check the features of this floor section. All right. Um, all right. So they went this way, and one, two, three, four, five. So something like that. One, two, three, four, five. About right there. Let's put. I'll take them off screen. Because they're not quite caught up yet. So I think it's supposed to be another T-section. I think that's how they're doing it. It's a T-section every time. No, I don't know if it's a T-section every time. So let's just say it's a long hallway. Okay, they're making a... So I'm going to mark that on here. I don't think it's a T-section every time. It might be, though. One, two, three, four, five. Well, maybe it has to be, because otherwise it's just going to be a long hallway. Um, there's nothing that says it goes right or left on these floor features. Floor end, floor end. Mm. I think I'm going to have to reread this. Because I don't know when it... Oh, here we go. Here we go, okay. This is, see, this is kind of weird about the book. Um... See, this is the floor feature, so I have to go over here and check what, where the floor, how the floor ends. Let's see, messing the next turn, losing one wood. Every floor has an ending, so you have to roll an additional 2d12 to find out about this. Sometimes you need to roll out two endings, just roll twice. Every floor has an ending, okay. All right, so this is the first section. We got uh, 15. So 15 is a left turn. Okay, so it makes a left turn. Okay. So I went one, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll see it makes a left turn right about here. So there's nothing. We checked everything right here. Or about right here, but turn in the corner. And let's roll again. See what the second section is. See what happens here. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll eventually have to put everything on one sheet. So I'm not flipping, flipping through pages constantly. Uh, I think I got an 8 and a 4. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. It's 12. Again, nothing. Nothing. I think this happened to the other guy. <sighs> he, got, he kept getting nothing a lot. But let's see. It takes a little while sometimes to get going. I think the reason why you get nothing so much is because you have this huge gap between 9 and 15. And that's a pretty common roll. So, let's see what happens here, how it ends. Twelve. So, I got twenty. Eight and twelve. Uh, stairs out. Ooh, stairs out. Interesting. So, makes sense in a way. Let's see. We'll do one, one. Two, three, four, five. Again, each tile is about five squares long. Stairs out. So these stairs could correspond uh, with these right here. 
how we how we got down there. So it could be a, just another. This was the way in and out, and this is a way out and in. Um, so it stairs out, so it's implying that you can leave the dungeon that way. So, okay. So we're gonna turn around. We're gonna backtrack. We're gonna go this way to the right and check this this direction. So back back to here. And again I put them in order. And let's see what happens. No, I'm only supposed to roll one, so I'll go with the 11. 11 is three sections. So that's a lot. So let's see what happens in the first section. Of course, that's going to happen. I should be rolling on my, on my moat dice roller to my right here. Let's be rolling on that bad boy right there. But uh, let's see. I want to keep it in camera. Let me see if I can zoom out. Yeah, I think I'm zoomed out as much as I can. So let's see. Yep, it's just going to keep rolling. I got an 11 and a 12. Look on here. Gosh, oh, 11 and 12, so that's uh, 23. Well, that's funny. <laughs> uh, they skipped 23 right here. <laughs> 21, 22, 23. I'm going to assume that's a floor trap in one door. Because... Otherwise, it's like a roll again. Let's just go with the floor trap and one door. Yeah. So. Floor trap. I wonder what kind of floor trap. Mm -hmm. So you want to go to, you want to go to traps. Traps, here we go. I, got, I marked it as page 40, traps. <laughs> Floor traps. Whole section on it, that's nice. 1D12, let's see what kind of floor trap it is. Now, I didn't say anything about looking for a trap. I should have mentioned it. I don't. Again, I don't know if it's like Hero Quest where you have to mention that you're looking for traps. So let's see what happens, what kind of trap it is. Hopefully he doesn't take his leg off. Like it did the Witcher. Nine. And that, oh boy, that's an alarm. Oh shoot. Yeah, alarm. Um, a alarm is sprung and monsters, monsters A appear. Monsters A appear. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, 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 and notice here, I'm going to wrap this up in a little bit, um, S and D, I'm assuming D is the number that you need to disarm this alarm. Um, disarm the trap later as a standard action by successfully rolling over the disarm value, which is a 7, uh, of the trap. Failure at disarming it. Disarming a trap springs it. Okay, so. Let's just do it for the sake of some exciting combat. Plus, I didn't, I didn't say I was checking for traps. Again, I don't know if Advanced Hero Quest does it that, this way, but I could just say um, the alarm went off. And a monster 
the monsters are on the way and it's time to see what kind of monsters it says monster a so I'm looking at the monster manual in here or looking for it anyway Let's see which ones show up it says a so it makes it seem like there's a chart monsters yeah uh, They have grade levels. Yeah, here we go. Monsters. Following the list is a list of monsters you can use for random dungeons or in designing a quest level. Calculate the party level by adding up the levels of all heroes. So that's four, because we're all four. Ooh, and henchmen. I forget about henchmen in this. Every time you meet monsters, roll D12. Confirm confer to the tables, wandering monsters and monsters in hazard rooms are usually grade one. So wandering monsters and monsters in hazard rooms are usually grade one. So grade one, it's right here. Alright. Um it says here. Uh, characters are also rolled on grade one tape table but consists only of one model. Uh, multiply the party level with the rolled modifier and roll and roll round up. Uh, the amount is the result is the amount of points the game master may spend on monsters. For every dungeon level the heroes go deeper and add half the modifier to the map modifier. So let's see I'll roll Ooh 12 okay. 